Hi there everybody, welcome to a new episode of the vlog. Uh, I'm back down here in the beautiful heart of downtown Victoria uh, for the second time on this tour. Now on this tour, I've been from Victoria all the way up to Port Hardy and back again. But this tour is coming to a close. Today is my penultimate gig of the tour. Got a gig in Victoria tonight. Well, the Victoria area, it's in uh, Colwood actually. And then I got a gig in Nanaimo tomorrow, but today, I learned something very interesting about the place that I'm staying. I'm staying here at the Ocean Island Inn and Backpacker Suites here in downtown Victoria. I've already mentioned on the vlog that it's an awesome, affordable spot for travelers, but uh, I do want to make clear that I'm not actually paid by them to say any of this. This is not a paid promotion. I just thought this place was really cool. Now, if you know me, you'll know that I love history. And one thing that really caught my eye when I checked into this place is this sign right here. I was like, really? Wow, 1891, that is crazy. And I did some research on it and it's very true. It was built during the days when the city of Victoria was expanding dramatically. It already, of course, had a bustling port and uh, a thriving town center, but they were moving further and further up the hill and more and more real estate was being purchased and more and more buildings were being built and uh, in the 1880s and early 1890s many many buildings like this were built here but this is one of the few to survive you can see aside from this church here it is surrounded by some distinctly more modern buildings nowadays well, it turns out that the uh, church is much older than even this building the cornerstone was laid for this synagogue, as it says, on June 2nd, 1863. That may be a topic for a future video. It was opened as the Osborne House Hotel. It operated as the Osborne House Hotel until 1908 or so. After that, it became the Pandora Hotel. Of course, it is on Pandora Avenue here, as the address there would say. But the Pandora Hotel didn't last quite as long. I believe it was closed in about 1917 or so. And then shortly thereafter, it became yet a third hotel. It became the Allies Hotel. And uh, that lasted till the mid 1920s. And then I'm not sure if the building was vacant for the next decade, but the next record is that by about 1935, it became a hardware store. I think that was always the intention to put retail services on the on the ground floor and housing uh, up on the second and third floor and it did become housing again very quick when a lot of it was needed uh, during the Second World War and about 1944 the building was converted back uh, into housing became an apartment building rather than a hotel. It became known as the Alexander Apartments Building in approximately 1946 and uh, stuck around for a very very long time the Alexander apartment buildings appear to have stayed until at the very least the 80s uh, it was again purchased in 1990 to be used as another apartment building by this point it was Solomon apartments and then it was for one last time sold again in the early 2000s and operated under its current title the Ocean Island Inn it was renovated to have these really cool tiny little rooms, which I've mentioned are just great because uh, they sell them fairly cheap. Uh, they're very bare bones. They're just basically a bed and not much more. But when you're somebody like me traveling around for music who wants a spot that's uh, in the heart of downtown and very cheap and private, uh, it just has worked great for me and lots of travelers over these past 20 years. So what a crazy life this place has led. From the Osborne Hotel to the Pandora Hotel to the Allies Hotel to a hardware store for a number of years to the Alexander Apartments to the Solomon Apartments to finally the Ocean Island Inn. It's seen a lot of uses but its iconic building has remained. And then if you go around uh, the back side of this building there is a fascinating piece of artwork. There is not only this beautiful, very West Coast mural designed and painted by Robert Scott Doby, but there's also a weird homage to, what is that, the Honeymooners? Strange, but very cool. 
I'm always so happy when I get a little bit of free time here in Victoria to wander around before a gig here. My gig's not till 9 p.m. So I get to spend another wonderful day here in the town of Victoria. And uh, the cool thing about uh, having my building right here on Pandora is if you go down Pandora, there is just so much history on this street. You go down the street and there's the beautiful City Hall building right across from the Hotel Rialto here. Uh, built in 1890 apparently this building so see what I mean this area was expanding quite a bit right around then late 1880s early 1890s here. Walk just a little bit further and check out the historic building that the island television is now occupying. Once you get over to Johnson Street here, pretty much every building has history to it. So many. Ooh, I've just noticed a beautiful ghost ad back there. The Urban Bar and Grill, something about fire insurance. Oh, just look at like these roofs of buildings over here. Uh, are so unchanged from years and years and decades and decades and decades. This sign here is actually hard to read these days from street level. I'm over at the side trying to read it where it's not obscured by trees. It's for a hotel and bar and grill and it says see the combine agent for yeah fire insurance and then an advertisement on uh, Johnson. I love ghost ads. They're often ads that have just been up on the side of buildings that no longer are relevant to anything. Or sometimes they'll knock down a building and they'll find an old ghost ad and restore it. I absolutely love them, love everything about them. But I also love this row of beautiful, colorful buildings here on Johnson. Uh, the W.C. Cameron building starts out the row built in 1888 and I've looked up quite a few of these buildings here and uh, a lot of them seem to have been built in that same time period, the late 1880s and early 1890s. Uh, my girlfriend's from Newfoundland and she told me over in Newfoundland there's this amazing street not too dissimilar to this called, uh, I believe it's Jelly Bean Row with all the colorful buildings. I know San Francisco is well known for colorful rows of buildings. Uh, there's the paper box building, which I believe it said opened in, was it 18... 90, I forget. Whoa, this building here, the blue one, used to be a corner store. It dates to 1875, so some of the buildings next to it just kind of went up around it. The Grand Central building here was once the Colonial Hotel, built in 1890. And this building also says Colonial on it. It says Colonial Metropole, 1892. And then you get to a thrift store that looks to my eyes to be <laughs> built during that pretty gross uh, era of <laughs> architecture uh, between I want to say the late 60s and like the early 90s when every single building seems to have been built out of this same brown unappealing brick you know compare that to like a hundred year earlier brick with this amazing cute little building here and then you get down, of course, to the water. But uh, it's not the end of the history here on this street, as there's some buildings down by the wharf that are argued to be some of Victoria's oldest. These buildings I talked about briefly in a vlog I made in 2020. I was concerned that they were headed for demolition, as I've seen a lot of crews here assessing the properties. But it looks like they're being redeveloped in their original facades and structures are going to be incorporated into a much larger fixture. One thing that's fascinating to me about these buildings, not just that there's some original tr uh, trading hubs down on the water here dating to like the late 1850s, early 1860s. Uh, you've got of course the Northern Junk Company building here and another one over here which has words that I just have been trying so hard I just can't quite read what this says. If anybody knows please let me know. Uh, you can see the remnants of letters. I see an E and an L there. Probably an R before them. Frel. Frelis. 
and then I can't tell. It looks like there's a T-E-R over here. Peters? I don't know. I don't know what that says. I can read the word commission over here. But yeah, these buildings date back to approximately like 1860 or so. And what blows my mind the most about these two buildings, look at the like, the way it was constructed out of stone. You can tell it's of an earlier era than the other uh, buildings. Anyway, one thing that's fascinating about these is not just that they've existed for like 160 years or so. There's an old boarded up window. But it's also that these buildings have been vacant since 1978. Let me see if I can see anything through that window. I think they're pretty hollow on the inside now. Yeah, 1978. Think about the hustle and bustle of this city, the amount of money that it brings in. It blows my mind that these buildings have been allowed to sit vacant here. Like, like look where they are. Like, look at this location. Somebody must be paying money to even have these buildings here. For almost 50 years, for like 45 years, 44 now, these buildings have had absolutely no occupants. But yeah, that should change very soon. Wow, they were built during the Fraser River Gold Rush era in the 1860s. One of them is the Kerr and Grancini warehouse and one of them is the Fraser warehouse. That definitely doesn't say either of those things, so that's been changed uh, over time, but yeah. Not sure exactly which is which, but one of these buildings was built in 1860, and the other one in 1864, I was just able to find out. Listen, I'm by no means an archaeologist, but I've wandered down to the water, and now after uh, exploring these buildings, well, not exploring them, but looking at them, I'm, not, I'm like looking everywhere, like where I'm walking, and I'm like, like, whoa, brick fragment. I'm like, is that from like construction of this or how would that have gotten there? And I'm like, I don't think a brick fragment in a walking path would have survived 162 years, but still, makes you wonder. And then if you walk a little bit over along the water, you get this view of buildings that seems to me to be almost identical to how it would have looked over 100 years ago. I particularly like the uh, Heaney's Cartage and Storage careful since 1890 <laughs> sign and there's one other thing along here that intrigues me it's this concrete and then brick wall down here by the water by the big parking lot and all of its little former windows that have been bricked over there's a few over here there's a prominent one over here where these like receiving areas for uh, products coming in from the water. I have no idea. I would love it uh, if anybody knew anything about these. Definitely let me know in the comments because they're just very interesting to me. Like this one where you've got mostly just stone but there's some patches of, uh, of brick. Like it looks like there used to be a brick uh, row across this and then this unique former entrance I assume I wonder and I guess it's underneath the street there well you know me and I didn't find out why the windows are here but I found out that this retaining wall was built all the way back in 1903 so yeah so much of this history has been here for so long there in the background is I believe in 1874 building maybe even older I just love everywhere you go in this city you find something new or rather something old I suppose anyway I've had a tremendously great time here just exploring uh, the history of the city of Victoria uh, it's the last day like I said I get to spend in Victoria but today of course like I mentioned I'm here for a gig so my gig tonight is not actually in Victoria proper. It's uh, over just about like 20 minutes down the road in the town of Colwood. I've never really stopped in Colwood itself, but I'm just thrilled to be performing in the greater Victoria area. I honestly have never been able to land a gig in this uh, metro area before. So definitely a major market to be getting into. Very exciting for me. 
now here I am at the lovely the Rose public house. It's so cute. It's just like kind of a house here right here off the main highway in Colwood. It looks so tiny from the outside. I'm like, what are there three tables in there? But it's like bigger on the inside. I swear once you get in it's quite the place. I'm gonna be all the way in the back here setting up right in this area for gig number I don't even remember of the tour but uh, it's the second to last one tonight so a friend of mine a few weeks ago a while ago now actually was having a conversation with me where he was telling me the age old story about how he was into some girl this girl was uh, seeing another guy and he was listing all the reasons why he would be better for her than this other guy <laughs> good friend and like uh, reassure him but secretly I'm also taking down notes for a song <laughs> and I came up with this next one it's called If You Were Mine Between the lines, but 
Just one to go on this tour. Tomorrow is my last day out on the road. Early Monday morning, then I'm going to leave and uh, get the opportunity to go back home. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said, tomorrow I've, I've got that gig in Nanaimo, so one more travel vlog to be to be made. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, like this video if you liked what you saw. Subscribe to my channel if you've been enjoying my videos and you can ring the notification bell too if you want to be notified whenever I upload a new video, which will be pretty soon, probably tomorrow. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, in the description are uh, links to where you can find my music, where it's sold or streamed online, as well as a list of all my upcoming concert dates, which is a great way to see where this vlog is going to go in the future. Uh, but that'll do it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys again real soon.